High uncertainty bus also interests rates and people need to get their money to work. Currencies or commodities should be their right option. Will there be correction or market will hold on these revenues international? Global economic condition and the sentiment from the U.S. and also European bring slowly the uncertainty to the future's investment. The volatility that now occurs is unpredictable to choose the next step in investing. The commodities or currencies could be the option. According to the global coal price, the coal mining companies in Indonesia are now facing the problem to get the benefits. Dollar against rupiah, dollar towards euro and others are way too dynamic to be predicted. The gold price that is still volatile also creates the confusion to the investors to choose the right basket to put the eggs. Now the question is, how is the right option to invest in the middle of this uncertainty and which way is the best to do? Completely, we will discuss about it in Revenues International. To discuss about currency fluctuation, commodities price and global economy, we have Mr. Vicky Armanani from Onex Invest in the Futures. Welcome to the show, Mr. Vicky Armanani. Thank you for coming. We'll discuss about it. So Thank you. before we got deep to the other um, the commodities and the currency, how do you see the Indonesian macroeconomic condition now? Well, actually, I will always say that Indonesia is under research. The economy is doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, the GDP growth is 6.3%, which is mm -hmm. spectacular compared to global GDP growth, of which is 2.3%, or if you compare it to developed nations such as US, where the GDP is 1.7, or European nations which are contracting in GDP, uh, Indonesia is doing very well. And in terms of the local demand, the domestic demand is 60% of the GDP, which is very good. But again, no economy is insulated completely from the impact of the global world, especially from Europe coming into a mild recession now, US showing slower growth from retail sales, unemployment rates. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all these issues are there which are compact, uh, impacting on the country. But if you look at Indonesia itself, just a quick recap. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the, the statistics of Indonesia, they're actually doing very well. Unemployment rate is at 6.7% okay. compared to your, the Eurozone, which is at 11%. Mm -hmm. Or even US at 8%. 8%. And you know, GDP growth is good. Uh, the, the companies over here, like banking sector, is growing their uh, loans by like about 30% average per year, and earnings growth is between 20 to 30%. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see the Indonesian stock market, also it's performing spectacularly. So uh, overall, even, okay, debt, government debt has become a yeah, big issue yeah. now for the world. But if you look at Indonesia debt, uh, the debt is very small compared mm -hmm. to the GDP, mm -hmm. uh, and their international reserves have been growing. And, uh, yeah, fiscal deficit has been only 1.6% of GDP. Mm -hmm. The only issue one now with Indonesia is that their imports have been increasing. Mm -hmm. Imports have increased by about 11.7%, yeah, whereas exports okay, have yeah. decreased by 7%. That's why we've seen the rupiah sort of gradually depreciate mm -hmm. from the last one year, from August 2011, mm -hmm. from a level of 8,400, slowly creeping to 9,600, where I forecast it to go to about 10,000. Is this condition still attracts uh, our foreign investor in portfolio or maybe foreign direct investment? Do you see this? Definitely especially in the infrastructure mm -hmm. um, segment because there's a lot of growth over there in the long term. But besides that, uh, one thing that's very attractive is uh, return on investment. Mm -hmm. Indonesia interest mm -hmm. rate is still at 5.75%, which is very attractive compared to neighboring countries or the U.S. Mm -hmm. I mean, today, if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't put my money in the U.S. because I would get 0.25%, yeah. and after cutting tax, you get 0.1%. Mm -hmm. So a lot of money from U.S. and with the debt problems in Europe is coming into Indonesia or emerging markets such mm -hmm. as Brazil, Russia, Indonesia, uh, even Australia itself okay, because of the right. high interest rates. There is an issue that overheating economy will be happening in Indonesia because uh, the government could give the supply on the high demand of our domestic consumption. Yeah. Do you see this as a threat to our economy or how is it? Uh, well, there could be some threat, but I think the only way is that the government has to provide stimulus. Mm -hmm. So the other way is uh, you, the Indonesian inflation now is quite steady at about 4.5%, whereas interest rate is 575 So they still have room to reduce interest rates. And that's what Indonesia has been doing over the last few quarters. Yeah. So by reducing interest rates, they they get businesses to borrow more money. The interest burden is not so heavy, and that way the, continue will con the economy can continue to grow. Mm -hmm. basically. Now the global economy is doing yeah. it now. The European, the United States, and also yeah. the, the, the Asia. How is it? 
Mm -hmm. I know we are we're in a we're in an environment where there's high uncertainty, mm -hmm. low interest rates, everybody has to get their money to work. Yeah. So people don't have choices rather than taking risks because nobody is interested to keep money in deposit. That's why all the money is going to equities, into commodities. And if you see in terms of let's focus on U Europe first. Europe has definitely gone into a recession, if not a mild recession already. Mm -hmm. We can see that the unemployment rate in the whole Eurozone, including the strong nations such as uh, Germany and France, the, the, the unemployment is 11%. Mm -hmm. Unemployment in other nations such as Spain is as high as 25% or even Greece over 20, high 20%. Yeah. Uh, there is no growth. The overall Eurozone growth is about 0.1% flat. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about other nations such as Greece, Spain, Italy, they're all under contraction. Yeah, What's the biggest problem now with the Eurozone? They have too much debt mm -hmm. and they have no growth. And basically governments are willing to lend their money, such as the European Central Bank, but then they're putting austerity measures on them that mm -hmm. you have to limit your uh, spending. So mm -hmm. the economy is stuck, you know, I mean, you need, yeah. you need a stimulus, you need to reduce your debt, you need some growth, they don't have any of that, and they're mm -hmm. kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So basically, how can they come out of this? They have to provide the confidence to uh, mm -hmm. investors, which they have been doing yeah. over the last two, three months. If you've seen Jenny stock markets, bond mm -hmm. markets, everything have been rallying. So the main thing is they have to keep markets calm, mm -hmm. keep investors assured that everything will be sorted out, they will provide as much liquidity provided, okay. and things can, go, things can work fine. Okay, interesting. We'll be continuing after the break, Mr. Sure. Well, we'll be right back with more discussions with Revenues International.